Oh, we have Luke Prokopek here, um, former Major League player and now uh, the pitching coach for a lot of our Australian teams. Welcome, Luke. G'day. <laughs> How did you first get into baseball? Um, my father, he, uh, we moved to a country region in South Australia and, and they didn't have baseball, so he basically took it upon himself to, uh, to get a league up and running and, and same with the, the junior leagues down there. And, and um, I basically grew up with it. Dad played um, down the city, played A grade for many years and uh, for a bunch of SA country teams. And um, yeah, just followed in, in his footsteps, but just being around the field from, um, I guess, the moment that I could, that I could crawl, uh, just being around it every single day, it sort of gets ingrained in it. Okay, and from where you were, it's a, it's a few hours, I think, to uh, Adelaide, so it was probably a fair bit of driving when you were a junior making all those national teams. Yeah, it sure was. I, uh, I started going to Adelaide every single weekend to, uh, to play in the 14s. So I'd jump on a bus, take about five hours uh, with all the stops in, in between and um, go down and play Saturday morning and, and then wait around for the Sunday and be back boy for my father's um, agro team in, in the city there. So wow. It was a lot week, uh, weekend long experience <laughs> every week. And uh, people probably may not remember this, but you were, you were one of our best catchers coming through as a junior and I think you actually signed as a catcher. That's right, yeah. I. Um, yeah, the way I profiled out is, as far as the scouting terminology goes, I profiled out best uh, behind the dish and um, had a good strong left-handed bat and a really strong arm and um, um, my build and, and that basically set up well for, for catching. I, I'd only done a little bit of catching, but um, but I was reasonable at it and um, went over my first year and and um, first day in a clubhouse, I had Mike Socia walk up to me, threw a glove in my hands and told me I was with him. So I spent uh, the first, first couple of months of that season as a catcher and as it turned out they sent two top prospects to um, to Great Falls, Montana my first year and I ended up going to right field and, and caught maybe once a week during the season but basically from there transitioned to the outfield for um, the two and a half seasons and, and converted to pitching in the Sally League. So w what was the thing when they come to you and they say hey look now we're going to try on the mound I mean but you could all you were always a pitcher as well when you were in Australia you know you, you were one of our best pitchers and one of our best hitters. So how did that translate or how did that sit with you? How did you take that? It was, it was very interesting. Um, strange, when, when you're on the field, all, all the position players they always go down the foul line, they warm up and they practice pitching. And, and the position players, all the pitchers always want to hit. It's just the way it goes and just messing about. And um, our pitching coach in Savannah, Georgia, Edwin Correa, who had a, a big career in, in New York with the Yankees, he, uh, he'd always joked around with, with me about possibly jumping on the bump and, um, and throwing a few down and as it turned out, uh, one, one, weekend, one weekend series there, we played against the Piedmont Bowl Weevils and, and um, we had a bunch of injuries and we were short a couple of innings so I went out to throw the last couple of innings of a ball game and hit 93 and struck out a bunch of um, the prospects on the other team and, and a week or so later I got called into the office and famous words, you know, the organisation decided to make a change and and uh, I proceeded to bore my eyes out for about five minutes because I thought I was getting axed. And um, and once I'd finished there, he, he let me know that I was I was moving to the mound. And and then I thought that was the end of it, anyways, because they had to they had to send me home, anyways, and we were short. So regardless of the way it came about, um, I was a hard worker, and, and I guess um, hard workers in pro ball um, go a little bit further and, and get a little bit more opportunity. So um, I. I gripped, you know, gripped that with both hands and, and um, gave it a fair crack and uh, finished off that season. I think it was three and one in the South Atlantic League with a three three and a half ERA and and the very next year, my first full year, I uh, ended up in San Bernardino pitching against uh, Brad Penny and John Patterson every every couple of days it seemed and um, and did really well there. Ended up uh, getting to Double A my first uh, full season in on the mound and. Um, and won a bunch of ball games, struck out 170, 180 odd uh, batters in about 140 innings, and um, and cemented my my spot as, as a pitcher, as a as a prospect. Okay, and um, when you get the call up, I mean the other guys we've interviewed remember it vividly, and and you still recall that? Yeah, I sure do. It was uh, a very very surreal moment. On one hand, I um, I had my tickets to go to pre Olympic camp on the Gold Coast. And we literally had our entire apartment packed up, ready to go. We were going, like, literally, like an hour later, we were heading to the airport, to the airport hotel, so we catch 
early morning flight out to um, Gold Coast and um, got a phone call uh, from our pitching coordinator. He said, whatever you do, do not get on the airplane, you're going to the big league. So, so I've, I've got a photograph still. Um, my wife was, was in the room at the time. She got a photograph of it. And uh, it's um, no, a very, very special occasion. It's, um, it's Even just now sitting here talking about it, you get, you get uh, goosebumps up the back of your neck and on your arms. And it's... Um, a uh, very special occasion. It took me six years and three positions to get there, and um, very happy, but uh, almost devastated too. On the other hand, too, because I was I was missing out my chance to go to the Olympics with the boys, and uh, everyone knows the Sydney story and and what happened there for us as a as a, as a nation. And um, you, you feel a little bit guilty for that, but on the other hand, it's um, it's a massive opportunity. That's that's why we're playing professional baseball to get to the highest level, and and um, and. Being the first opportunity, I, I couldn't let that slide. And as it turned out, what I did in that September in 2000 is basically what gave me the opportunity to pitch the next three years in professional baseball. And it's not just, I mean, getting to the big leagues at any club is outstanding, absolutely outstanding. But the club you were with had a fair load of history and they're one of the biggest clubs. And uh, playing in that area has just got to be, talk about surreal again, you know? Yeah, it was, um, it was very, um, very special to be to be able to make the big leagues with, with that club that they had in Los Angeles at the time. I think they had the highest payroll in baseball and, 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 and literally having your locker right next to Kevin Brown, that was um, that was pretty cool. Uh, Brown, he's, he's an interesting fella. Four days of the week, he's a top bloke. And uh, day five, you, you don't go anywhere near the bloke. He's um, he's that locked in. But it's um, the, the big league's really special. Um, my first, first appearance in the big leagues, we were playing Pittsburgh, and um, Darren Dreyfus started for us, and he really struggled. And um, this Darren, if anyone doesn't know him, he uh, he probably had more electric stuff than Kevin Brown. Just just really couldn't get a handle on it. And um, this particular night, he, he was off, and um, he he went short, and I ended up coming in for I think three and a third innings, gave up um, one hit and no runs, and um, struck out a couple guys, and um, yeah. Funny things, you, you get that first first appearance in there and you can remember the smell of, of the dugout and, and running out and just the feel of the grass underneath you and the, how, how crisp the, the mound is, just all these little things you can remember like it's yesterday. There's, I mean, there's a lot of other times, other outings that I don't even remember, but everyone remembers their first outing and um, and definitely look at, looking down from uh, when I towed that rubber, it's, um, it looked like it was about 130 feet and I was... I was a little bit concerned I was going to hit the back net my first pitch in the game, but it's uh, I threw strike one, first pitch, and um, yeah, the rest is history. And who was managing then when you were there? Uh, Davey Johnson was. It was a really interesting time. Davey, we, the, the club hadn't had a, a great year, and and there was some um, some commotion going on between um, I, Davey and, and the front office, and um, he, evidently he was on the way out and uh, made for some very quiet times after games and um, but it was interesting next year we had uh, Jim Tracy come in Jim's a very very cool customer and, and good bloke and um, and also Jim Colborn was our um, was our pitching coach and Colby a lot of a lot of young prospects around Australia would recognize Jim uh, he, he scouts internationally for the Texas Rangers and has signed a few guys in he's, he's around every January in, in Australia um, top bloke 